Let's do an example then uh, uh, by with using the uh, admittance Smith chart. So we have a structure here where I've given you a load and a transmission line, lossless transmission line of a given length 0.7 lambda. And then likewise, I put a shunt impedance uh, here at the input. And we want to find the input admittance of the whole darn thing. So this is the input admittance of this entire structure. Of course, this is a one port device and therefore we can characterize it with an admittance. And the question is, what is that admittance? Now, I've given you everything in terms of impedance and students sometimes um, because they're more comfortable with impedance is just go solve the whole thing in terms of impedance and then at the end take the inverse to find the emittance. But we'll find it's a little bit easier if we really go through and use the emittance Smith chart uh, to find the answer. And uh, that's what I'm trying to accomplish here is to show how we can use the emittance Smith chart to get, uh, to get this answer. In microwave engineering, it turns out emittance is oftentimes an easier way to express some of the device, um, some component in terms of, you know, an inductor, in terms of uh, uh, its, its uh, impedance, talk about it in terms of its uh, su uh, susceptance susceptance um, and and the reason for that is because in microwave engineering we tend to have more shunt elements elements that are in parallel with each other and if we have several elements in parallel with each other and we know the admittance of each then we simply have to add the admittances together to find the admittance of the total in impedance then we have to go through and use the parallel uh, combinations to do the calculations and it's uh, it's much more difficult so actually uh, uh, admittance is in in many ways a more natural representation of um, of an element of a structure than impedance is oftentimes uh, when, when we're doing this um, uh, microwave engineering. So the first step in this is determine the input impedance of the transmission line that is terminated. So we've sort of ignored this uh, second shunt element here uh, and, and are simply looking at the equivalent circuit of the right side uh, of this circuit example. And this is a classic transmission line problem. We have a terminated transmission line of a length 0.73 lambda and this impedance. What we want though is to determine the uh, input, not the input impedance of the structure, but the input admittance of this structure. And there's a couple ways that we can go and get this value. We're going to use the uh, try to demonstrate uh, uh, foremostly the um, method for finding an answer that involves the admittance Smith chart. So <clears throat> the first thing you want to do is um, uh, express the load impedance uh, in terms of uh, its load admittance. So we want to find the inverse of ZL. And of course, we could use our calculator to determine this, but we could more easily, I would argue, uh, find the answer by using the Smith chart. Sure, if we had a Smith chart that had both the uh, impedance contours and the admittance contours on them, that transformation would be very simple. We first take our Smith chart and find the location uh, on the Smith chart of the load impedance, 1.6 uh, J 2.6. So we're going to look at the uh, R equal to 1.6 circle. We're going to look at the X equal to 2.6 plus 2.6 contour. And we're going to look at the intersection. Again, these are red contours here and find the location. And that is the correct location on the complex gamma plane for ZL, the right value of gamma L. Since it's the right value of gamma L, then we can see where the contours of constant admittance intersect that same point gamma L. We can go through and we look at the blue contours here and we see that a circle of about R, uh, G rather of 0.17 intersects that green dot and likewise a contour of constant susceptance again a blue contour now comes through and intersects that point a contour of about 0.28. That is the value then of the emittance uh, of the load. Um, again, what we did was simply locate the point using the red contours and then go through and see what blue contours, the emittance contours intersected. And that gave us the right value. And you could mathematically verify that this is in fact the case. 
So just a summary of what I just uh, explained, uh, we find the impedance using the red contours. And then at that same point, uh, once we find the location of the complex gamma plane, we take that point and see which blue contours uh, intersect it. And from that, we can determine the value of the emittance. And again, you can show mathematically that this impedance transforms into this emittance. You could use your calculator to find the answer, or in this case, we simply use the Smith chart. So the Smith chart were both contour types, both uh, uh, contours of constant resistance and reactance uh, in red are plotted on uh, likewise with contours of constant uh, conductance and susceptance in blue. Um, we don't really see those uh, uh, too often because they're just a little bit too busy uh, to deal with. And there's really no need to plot both of the contours because they are identical with, uh, with respect to a rotation of 180 degrees. So um, as we talked about before, um, the difference between the uh, admittance Smith chart and the impedance Smith chart um, is are the uh, mappings, the contours themselves. Again, we recognize the impedance because the contours all um, approach the open circuit point, and we uh, recognize the admittance uh, Smith chart in that the, um, the contours all approach the uh, short circuit. Uh, the relationship between the contours are simply 180 degrees mapping, but we keep in mind that even though the contours can be rotated, the uh, gamma plane does not. The short circuit is still at the same location on both Smith charts. The open circuit is still at the same location on both, um, both Smith charts. So with just a general Smith chart with one set of contours, it could be rotated one way or the other for impedance or emittance, in order for us to transform the uh, load or the load in terms of its impedance to determine its uh, value in emittance, um, this is the procedure that we might uh, follow. So we start with an impedance Smith chart and we look at our contours and identify the proper location on the complex gamma plane of gamma L for this impedance. Real part of 1.6, imaginary part reactance of 2.6, intersecting that point. Now, this shows the um, uh, impedance contours. In a perfect world, we could uh, push a button and have all the impedance contours disappear and then have the emittance contours reappear. That's like what we'd like to have happen. But assuming we just have a physical piece of paper, how do we uh, make the emittance parameters or emittance contours appear on this complex gamma plane? So in other words, this is what we'd like to have happen. Our complex gamma plane remains unchanged. We have the point gamma L at the proper location, but the underlying contours have magically changed from contours of constant impedance to contours of constant admittance. And then we can go through and look at this dot and see where we have the uh, uh, circle of constant conductance and the contour of constant susceptance where they intersect that point to determine the load admittance. And if we do that, we um, um, we get a value of 0.17 minus uh, J um, uh, 0.28. So given that we can't magic magically make our contours disappear and reappear in a different, uh, in a different form in terms of uh, emittance, for example, one way we could do this is take our physical Smith chart and put our point right here, and then for gamma, gamma L right here, and then keeping gamma L constant, we try to rotate the entire Smith chart around the center so we come back and now have our admittance contours um, uh, underneath our gamma. But that's a very difficult process to try to rotate all of the contours while leaving the gamma plane and the value of gamma L uh, constant with respect to that rotation. Turns out, of course, we don't really have to do that operation. All right, so this uh, operation of trying to rotate the entire Smith chart while keeping the point gamma L uh, at a fixed location on the complex gamma plane is, is very uh, difficult uh, to do. But 
uh, it's important to realize that rotating the Smith chart while keeping the point gamma L constant on the complex gamma plane is equivalent to simply rotating the point gamma L while keeping the Smith chart constant. And that's much easier to do, to keep our piece of paper constant and rotate the point as opposed to keep the point constant while we rotate the whole darn Smith chart. Either way, we accomplish the same thing. And so physically, from the standpoint of a, um, uh, a, a, a recipe, a, a, a procedure, uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to rotate around the Smith chart 180 degrees. And what we're really doing is rotating the Smith chart as we do that. So here's the procedure. Start with the um, impedance Smith chart and locate, uh, given the value of R and X, the proper location with the contours, and we know that's the correct value of gamma L. Now, take your ruler, your straight edge, and draw a line through the Smith chart, through the center, and the point gamma L. So extend it all the way through uh, from one side to the other. And then take your compass and strike a circular arc. Rotate around 180 degrees. Rotate around until you reach this point. And obviously, since we're rotating 180 degrees, you could rotate the other way. It doesn't matter which way you rotate, clockwise or counterclockwise. If you're going 180 degrees, you'll end up at the same spot. When you get that, mark that spot with your circle. All right, what have we done here? We could say that we've taken this point of the complex gamma plane and rotated 180 degrees around the complex gamma plane. But what we've really done is rotate the contours with respect to this point 180 degrees. And that's what we want to do. Rotating the point with respect to the contours is the same thing as rotating the contours with respect to the point. To make that clear, what we're going to do is take the whole structure, when we're going to it's done, take the whole piece of paper and rotate it back the opposite direction 180 degrees. So again, once you've taken your compass and you've rotated your point around the Smith chart 180 degrees, once you're done, take that Smith chart and rotate it back 180 degrees. And now the contours will rotate around and look what we have. We have the admittance Smith chart. And moreover, if we look at that point that we marked, it is in the proper spot in the, prop, in the complex gamma plane. It's at the value of gamma L as it should be. But what's happened, what appears to have happened, is we took the original contours of constant impedance and poof, we made them disappear and then reappear the, const the contours of constant admittance with our location of gamma L unchanged. So this is how we make our impedance contours disappear, impedance contours disappear and our admittance contours reappear without changing the Smith chart. It's a two-step procedure. First, mark the value of gamma L using the impedance contours. Strike a circular arc around the Smith chart, 180 degrees. Mark that point and then rotate the whole Smith chart back 180 degrees again. And now we see we have the contours of cotton's admittance, admittance and the proper location for gamma L. To determine then the admittance value of this gamma L, the admittance value that corresponds to a load impedance, uh, that original load impedance, well, we simply look at the uh, contour of constant G, that circle, and turns out to be 0.17, and the contour of constant S, constant, uh, um, constant B rather, constant susceptance, and that turns out to be a minus 2A. And again, it's minus because it's in the upper half plane here. We're talking about susceptance. That is the value of the load admittance. And so this is a way of actually determining the inverse of any complex number. You take a Smith chart and find the location of that number on the uh, using the uh, contours of constant uh, impedance. Take a, take a compass and rotate around 180 degrees, keeping the distance from the center constant, <clears throat> marking that point, rotating it back, and see where the contours intersect uh, and, and uh, of, of constant admittance intersect. And that would give you an answer, which is the numeric inverse of the original. All right, so what we want to find, of course, is the input admittance. 
How do we go through and determine that? We have the right value of gamma L, and we want to find from that the value of the input emittance. Well, this is a step that causes great confusion for students because they're like, well, gee, I'm, I'm uh, now using the emittance Smith chart. Um, you know, which direction do I rotate? How do I, what, what procedure do I, uh, do I use? That's why I've tried to emphasize that this step, this procedure we use in the, step, in the Smith chart is a parametric plot of the reflection coefficient and we rotate on the complex gamma plane. We start at gamma L and we move to gamma N. If we're moving down the transmission line uh, toward the load, then Z is increasing and therefore we're rotating counterclockwise. If we are moving up the transmission line away from the load, then Z is decreasing and we're moving clockwise. That is true regardless of the, uh, the contours of the Smith chart or emittance contours or if they are are uh, impedance contours. The reflection coefficient mapping cares not about the contours uh, of impedance or emittance underneath it. We are on the complex gamma plane period, regardless if we are on the emittance Smith chart or the reactive uh, or impedance Smith chart. Uh, the uh, parametric plot of the reflection coefficient is the parametric plot of the reflection coefficient. The contours underneath it make no difference. We do exactly the same procedure as we did before with respect to the reflection coefficient function and the complex gamma plane. So we start in this case at gamma L and we rotate around a distance that is commensurate with the electrical length of our transmission line, in this case 0.37. So we would draw a line through here, determine the outer scale mark, we would take that mark and add 0.37 to it to figure out where we need to stop over here. Got a little bit of a problem because you have to deal with the boundary, but we figure out where the uh, um, where the outer scale value is that we should stop. We take a straight edge and draw through the circle, the center of the Smith chart to that location. And now we take our compass and we simply rotate around, keeping our radius constant until we bump into this index, this mile marker, and then we stop. We put our pencil there, and that is the proper location on the complex gamma plane for the value of gamma in. The only question is what uh, emittance corresponds to that value of gamma in. Well, it's fairly simple then to figure that out. We pick up our pencil and we look and see the circle of constant conductance, which circle of constant, constant conductance intersects that point and it turns out to be g is equal to 0.7. Likewise, we look to see what contour of constant susceptance intersects that green point. We follow it up to here and we find it has a value of 1.7. Because we're in the upper half of the gamma plane, we know that susceptance is negative. In other words, inductive as it was before. Because we have gone through and we under we understand that this is our admittance contours. Again, we're all the contours converge the short circuit location on the complex gamma plane, we know that we can interpret these contours directly as contours of constant uh, susceptance and constant uh, conductance. Um, and so that's one of the things in the procedure where we started, we, we rotate around 180 degrees to to uh, turn our uh, uh, impedance into an emittance. Sometimes people won't rotate back to, to, the, uh, to show that we have uh, contours of uh, uh, the Bitten's contours of the uh, Mitten Smith chart. Uh, and, you know, to a certain extent, you don't have to rotate back, but it's always important, I think, to do that. So in your mind, you understand I'm now on the complex Mitten Smith chart, rather, as opposed to the uh, Impedance Smith chart. So we talked about there are two methods to get this answer. And the second method is this. We uh, start um, um, by finding gamma L on the impedance Smith chart. And then we go through and we apply our um, uh, parametric um, uh, plot of the um, uh, reflection coefficient function from gamma L to gamma N. In other words, we'd start at gamma L, all right, the same location as we just got through doing in method one, but we found it using the impedance parameters only. And then we rotate around a value of two beta L, and then we stop. 
When we're done there, we're in the right spot on the complex uh, gamma plane, the right spot for gamma L, the same, or gamma N rather, same as we just got through doing for method one. But when we look, we see that we still have the contours of the impedance Smith chart there. Instead of having G is equal to uh, constant value circles, what we have is R equal to constant value circles. And so what we want to do is we, we can determine the input impedance uh, directly, but we want the input admittance. We'd like for those contours of constant impedance to disappear, and then all of a sudden the contours of constant emittance to reappear underneath it. To accomplish that disappearance and reappearance with a different set of contours, remember we have a two-step process there. We can take the location on our Smith chart of gamma in that point, and we take our compass and we rotate around 180 degrees to the other side of the Smith chart. I say rotate 100 degrees, 180 degrees, I mean we're rotating the point around by keeping the Smith chart itself fixed. And once we've rotated around 180 degrees, then we rotate the entire Smith chart back. And what has happened is we're back to the same location on the, on the complex gamma plane, but now we have our contours of emittance underneath that point. And we can look at the intersection of those contours with that point, and from that we can determine the value of uh, normalized impedance y in. And you can see that these are uh, equivalent uh, uh, methods, and we'll get the same answer. In the first case, when we start off with the impedance Smith chart, we rotated a value of 2 beta L. I'm sorry, let's go back. The first method, rather, we rotated the point 180 degrees using a compass amount of Smith chart, and then we rotated again a value of 2 beta L. For the second method, we first rotate 2 beta L on the uh, impedance Smith chart, and then we rotate another 180 degrees, and then flip everything back to determine the value of the emits. And so we either rotate 180 and then 2 beta L, or 2 beta L and then 180. We end up at the same spot. But it's important in that procedure to make sure that you rotate the paper at the proper location so you in your mind know am I working now on the complex admittance plane or on the complex impedance plane. Again oftentimes people will rotate their point 180 degrees and leave it there. I think it's important to rotate the point 180 degrees around your Smith chart and then rotate the whole Smith chart back so now that point is back where it was on the complex gamma plane. The only thing has changed is that the contours of constant impedance have transformed into con contours of constant admittance and now you know underneath that point is you can determine the admittance uh, that corresponds to that value of gamma. So this becomes now our new equivalent circuit. We've replaced the terminator transmission line with its input admittance, which we found to have a value 0.7 minus J 1.7. And we combine this with this uh, shunt element expressed in terms of its impedance to determine the total uh, admittance Y1. Now, if we knew the value, in this value Z2, in terms of its admittance, we simply could add that to Yn to find Y1. And so it's easier to go through then and rewrite this in terms of admittance. Now, we could simply take this value and put it into our calculator to find the new admittance value Y2, but we could also use our Smith chart. We know the, um, uh, the uh, procedure now. Ideally, we would find uh, the location on the Smith chart uh, using the contours of constant impedance, and then go through and see where the contours of constant admittance uh, intersect that same point to define the equivalent admittance. Given that we don't have a blue and a red contour, the easiest way is simply to go through and find this location on the Smith chart, r equal to 1.7, x equal to minus, or, yeah, minus 1.7, find those contours on the Smith chart, then take a compass and rotate 180 degrees to the other side of the Smith chart, and then rotate the whole thing back. Now you're in the right spot for the gamma of Z2, but when we look underneath, we see we have the contours of constant and mids. And from that, then we can find the intersection of those contours and determine the admittance, both the conductance and the susceptance. So if we do that, we find that uh, Z2, um, if expressed in terms of admittance, has a value of 0.3 plus 
j.3, and then we can add that to our input admittance. Uh, again, since these are in parallel, we simply have to add the admittance values and don't have to worry about the parallel rule. Directly add them and we get a value of y1, which is equal to 1 minus j1.4. So you want to spend some time going through and thinking about how we use um, you know, the admittance Smith chart. And the important step, again, is that step of identifying the location on the, on the complex gamma plane from the uh, contours of, con uh, of constant impedance, rotating the point itself around 180 degrees without changing the Smith chart, and then rotating the whole Smith chart with the point back to where the original point is still at the complex gamma plane, but the uh, uh, impedance, uh, impedance contours of the impedance Smith chart have sort of magically disappeared and reappeared in them play, their place has, is now the contours of the admittance Smith chart. That's how we go back and forth between the admittance Smith chart and the, and the impedance Smith chart is again, rotate the point with respect to the uh, Smith chart and then rotate the Smith chart back with point and all to restore the value of that point to its proper location in the complex gamma plane.